Oh no. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has finally come for Let's Play Mega Man and Base. Uh, uh, uh. Note, as you might be able to tell just by the screen ratio, I am not playing the original Game Boy Advance version. I'm actually playing the Super Nintendo fan translation because it's just better. And, as the name would suggest, we have two playable characters in this one, Mega Man and Base. Mega Man controls the exact same way he did in Mega Man 8. Slide, charge shot, weapon switching, all the same. However, he's hard mode. So, I'm playing as Base. And the, I like actually this one thing they do as soon as you start off the game. The moment you pre to select your character, they actually show you what they can do. Albeit kind of crudely through those images. And even though you could probably figure it out just by looking at those three images, Base is kind of a mix of X and Zero from the X series at this point. He can dash with the A button, think it's down in A on the Game Boy Advance, double jump, and fires in seven of the eight directions in burst rates of three. He is basically... I think the closest thing I could say is easy mode, but it's more like normal mode, because honestly, as you'll see, this game's stage design is not the best. Especially if you're playing as Mega Man, because the, some of the jumps are, are ridiculous with him. Either way, uh, as for why this was a Super Nintendo game, even though by this point Mega Man 8 was already out, it's because Inafune apparently wanted to make a, g a game for the console that some of the younger players might not have the money to afford yet. So they re uh, released this, and I have to admit, for Super Nintendo, this looks incredible. Mind you, this was 1998. I think this was one of the last games released on the system, uh, at least in terms of, like, licensed releases that weren't, like, but done by fans. And it shows that if you know how to use the console, especially after years progressed and people know how to use it effectively, you can do some great stuff. Either way, in terms of the plot of this game, we are about a year after Mega Man 8. Dr. Wily, and well, first off, this is the base plot, because the plot's slightly different depending on who you're playing as. Dr. Wily's castle has been broken into and stolen by some robot named King, and so he sent us base to capture him, or destroy him, one of the two, in the middle of this robot museum that he's currently invading, which, by the way, I believe is supposed to be the exact same robot museum from the mid-stage of Mega Man 7. On this part of the stage right here is actually pretty annoying, because there's actually, uh... Wind pushing it backwards, so some of the jumps are really annoying to make. Thankfully, I have a double jump. Also, I don't quite take advantage of it until, like, later parts. But if you're good with base, you can actually get right in front of the Sniper Joes and shoot through the shield. Either way, you know what those doors mean? It's boss time. Proto Man! That's far enough, King. First Dr. Wily's lab, now the museum. I've now obtained all the blueprints on you combat robots. With this data, I can assemble an invincible mechan mechanoid army. Since you're a robot, you can join me if you want. Huh? Looks like some other little wannabe has come to try and stop me, huh? I guess I'll just leave you two to my underlings. You ain't going anywhere, King. Enough, you annoying little pest. Yeah, he's got this. Never mind. That, uh, that, that looks painful. At least you got half your life bar left. So that's King, huh? Well, there's only room for one strongest in this world. And that's me. Nobody will stand in the way of the forging of my legend as the most powerful being in the world. Odd sentence structure there, base. And that's probably just due to the fact the fan translators didn't do the grammar as well as they should have. It would be simple to kill you right here and now, but I'm afraid I must see to assembling my great king army. I'll let my green devil take care of you. Let the fact that the game starts off with the devil as the boss be a sign for the difficulty. Although green devil as base is the easiest devil in the series because you can just stand here and do this and he'll never touch you. As Mega Man, you have to be a bit more careful because you actually have to jump up and shoot your charge shots to open up the hole very slowly, and it just takes long to get damage in. As base, though, this fight is pathetic. And unlike uh, most prior Mega Man games at this point, aside from maybe eight, you actually do have a save system. Four save slots, and it actually shows you everything you're doing. That's the only time I'm showing the save screen, though. And here's our level select. It looks a little different. The way it works is that, first off, you can go back to the intro stage anytime on the far left. And on the second, 
column of things there, we have our first three robot masters. One of them looks very familiar. Basically, you have to kill that robot master, and then the three to the right of it will be available. So if I destroy the middle one, the three in the middle on the, on the middle column will be available. It's an odd progression system, and I'm not sure how I feel about it, but also available is the shop. Yet again, like in Mega Man 7, and even uh, with Roland 8, you have a shop you can spend your bolts at. Bolts are closer to Mega Man 7, though, and that they're dropped by enemies and found in other ways. And we actually have some stuff we can get off the bat. Extra lives, the energy equalizer from 6, the exit thing, a spike protection which only works once, a transceiver which just gets you from some flavor dialogue from Roll really, and a one-time use of those item balls from Mega Man 8 in any of these stages. Note that there's three rows of items, the more get unveiled the farther you go in. Nothing is really useful there aside from maybe the energy balancer at this point, but I'll leave that for later. Also, this is the database. I already did this off screen, but hidden in all the game stages are a total of 100 CDs. These, well, let's just take a look at Mega Man's. The super robot created by Dr. Light. He saved the world several times. Our hero, ups, strong sense of justice, down, careless, likes animals, hates hoodlums. Huh. That's, an, that's a good point, a bad point, a like, and a dislike along with the description. That sounds familiar. There's a reason for that. These are the bios I've been reading for the Robot Masters this entire series. It's all in there, although in this Super Nintendo fan translation, uh, there's a bit different. But some things are still there, like Gutsman liking karaoke. A uh, notable difference from the, like, the American version to here is that like with Gyro Man, he doesn't like Greek sandwiches. He instead likes Taketamba, which is some sort of Japanese snack. But... Every single Robomaster Master from this point in the series is in here. Mega Man's 1 through 8, and bases, the Mega Man Killers, the Star Droids, the Genesis unit even, and also just some basic character bios for all the characters from this game. I'm not showing how to get them all, however I will say the Mega Man knowledge base, which is basically the Mega Man wiki, has a comprehensive list on where each of the CDs are and how to get them and which characters can only get them and such. So if you want to get them all, I recommend using that. But with that, it's time for our first Robot Master, Cold Man. Cold Man is a robot created to freeze DNA for dinosaurs. His body temperature is kept at absolute zero. That doesn't make physical sense because absolute zero means that nothing's moving. Good point, carefree attitude. Bad point, slow perception. Likes Frappuccinos and dislikes the El Nino effect. First off, uh, slightly reused graphics here from Freeze Man stage. Now, one thing I've got to say right now that you're going to notice throughout the stages is that there's often things that have no reason to be there otherwise. Like, uh, earlier on, there was an ice block that was just there for no reason, and that that's just there for health. More often than not, when you see one of those, that's because that's where a CD was. And more often than not, they have like little platforming challenges to get to them, or you need a certain uh, Robot Master's ability, so on and so forth. For the most part, those spots are now going to be empty because I got them all. But if you know, if you can keep your eye out, you can probably spot where a few of them are. Either way, Cold Man's stage, despite being the ice level, doesn't have too many ice physics, but it does have a very annoying mini boss on the Game Boy Advance version. You can only hit the snowman in the head, and the way his pattern works is that he sucks in air, which you get sucked in towards as well, then he fires snowman into the air, which slowly drip down, and will stay on the floor once they land. After that, he'll jump a couple times, uh, I think the amount of jumps decreases the lower his health is, and he'll repeat from there. It doesn't look too annoying, but on the Game Boy Advance version, this is actually very hard to judge, because the Game Boy Advance version had something I like to call Super Nintendo Port Syndrome, which basically every game on the system that was a port did. Washed out visuals... Remixed music, well, re-instrumented music, really, for the Game Boy sound chip, which had very hit-or-miss quality, though, honestly, I've heard of the Game Boy Advance soundtrack at this so much at this point, I almost kind of prefer it just due to nostalgia. And the worst defender of all of them, Screen Crunch. Let's put it like this. Even though the health bar is in a different position due to it, if I recall, if I were to do this with my editing techniques, you could only see about this much of the screen at any point in time. And that's ridiculous. It makes the game a lot harder, and in certain rooms, you can get blindsided by spikes because of that, particularly in a, a Robot Master on the lower path side, as we'll see eventually. And I don't like that. That screen crunch is one of the reasons I'm not playing the Game Boy Advance version, because it makes the game harder than it should be. And keep in mind, and I'll say this as for a fact, this is one of the harder Mega Man games anyway. Like, I still have trouble with this. The main eight Robot Master stages, looking back, aren't that bad, but... 
Uh, the end game is kind of ridiculous. Either way, it's time for Cold Man, who is a very simple boss character, which is why I recommend going after him first. Way he starts off is that he'll con he'll create a little ice pillar in front of him, and then he'll send it at you, which will bounce off the wall. And then he'll repeat. I think he does this three times and then jumps, or maybe it's two times, I don't know. And really after that, just repeat ad nauseum. He also has this attack where he'll block himself up, but then create a little ice floors beneath you, which he rarely ever does in the Game Boy Advance version from my experience. And that's about it until he's about in his second half of the health bar, because bosses kind of have boss phases now. At that point, he'll become invincible for a moment, his head will pop open, and he'll send out a little cloud enemy. What that enemy does is that I'll slowly flow toward you to the point where it touches you, and when it does that, it'll slow you down so tremendously that you'll likely get hit by the ice pillar like this. At this point, though, his pattern becomes very simple, because as long as you kill the robot before he has a chance to move, He'll spend his next turn opening it and restarting his pattern, so you can get him into a bit of a loop. However, as you're noticing, the Base Buster isn't the strongest weapon. It only does about one bar of damage. That's the one thing Mega Man actually has in terms of advantage over base, is that his boss fights are easier due to his charge shot and overall higher damage buster. However, even though Mega Man's slide allows him to get to certain areas, he, you, you really need the double jump in a lot of areas of the game. It's really unfair to Mega Man. Cold Man, though, once you get him to this point and you get his pattern down, he's really easy. I like his design, though. That's really cool. And yeah, I'm out of things to talk about now. Cold Man's stage on the whole, actually, now that I think about it, isn't that hard at all. It's really the ideal first stage, because there's no real gimmicks to it aside from him at a slightly annoying mini-boss. So it's overall just an ideal first pick. And time for one of the most badass weapon gets ever. That's right, Base shoots into the air so hard that he absorbs the dead spirit of the enemy, or something along those lines. It's weird. Either way, for beating Cold Man, we get Ice Wall, which is as it sounds. You shoot, you generate a little wall in front of you, you can push it in any direction and it'll destroy enemies in your way. You can also stand on it, however, keep in mind that it slowly deteriorates. Also, I'm editing out all saves from here on out just to save on time. And next up is we're going from one extreme to the other, from Cold Man to Burner Man. Burner Man is a robot created to destroy nature. His wave burner can burn anything around him. Good point, he's faithful. Bad point, he's jealous. Likes, global warming, <laughs> asshole, and dislikes self-destruction, which is actually a bit of a hint towards his weakness being the ice wall, not for the reason you'd think. And I'll be honest, on the Game Boy Advance version especially, I hate the stage because Let's put it like this, we're here for the next five minutes. This stage is probably longer than it should be, and there's just a lot in your way, and I think this checkpoint is also pretty sparse. Yeah, that's totally not easy to break as, break, as base. They really, I, I almost think they didn't think about what the base buster could do for you, but at the same time, I think they did, because some of the enemy placements, some of the later stages, get really annoying as Mega Man, but are pathetic as base, because you can just shoot them from any position. I'm not exactly sure of why they decided to design certain stages around that. I My theory is that this game was originally just going to be a game for base, but then they decided it might not sell copies unless it has the Mega Man name on there, so they decided to do that. Mind you, I don't know anything about the development of many Mega Man games, but for the most part, I just know what everyone else knows. Also, going back to the Game Boy Advance version really quick, one thing I should say about the BIOS is that despite me playing the fan translation, I am still reading the bios from the American uh, version, so Dr. Light's bad point is still that he's douchey. Uh, Mega Water, no, Hyperstorm H dislikes Porky, and so on and so forth. Uh, the Japanese version is a lot more uh, comprehensive, actually, in terms of, you know, being understandable to what's being said about who. Anyway, this part of the stage is a bit of a running gimmick for some stages in that there are invisible floors a la Wily, I think it's Wily 3 from Mega Man 2, or is it Wily, or is it Wily 4? One of the two of them. The one where you fight, uh, Boo Beam Trap. 
thankfully, when you're base, you can skip over a lot of them or even save yourself from falling down. But as Mega Man, that section's annoying, and you're supposed to use Ice Wall to your advantage so you can get through there. That's actually something I do kind of like about the stages, is that you can you have to have certain Robot Master powers to get to some of the stages. They design use of those powers in some of those stages. Not all of them. Uh, this is one of the few that actually come to mind when I think about that, actually. But it's still there nonetheless. I do believe if you're Mega Man, by the way, you could shoot through that wall and kill that thing. Oh, I hate this section, especially in the Game Boy Advance version. Because it's extremely hard to see these snakes coming in the Game Boy Advance version for some reason for me. Maybe it's just due to the, higher, uh, the more washed out palette or something. Either way, I take a lot more damage in there than I probably ever should. Notable though, they did change some of the power-up designs. I think the energy pellets are the same as they were in Mega Man 8, but the HP looks different. But it's been a while since I played 8, so I don't quite remember. Also, this thing totally doesn't have more health than it should. That's one thing that's kind of annoying. Also, make sure you have Ice Wall at max ammo because you're gonna want it for the boss. Now, one thing about this game I didn't know for years until uh, probably my junior year of high school or something along there, is that this game in particular actually has a sequel on the Wonder Swan, and it looks wonky as hell. Uh, it's Mega Man and Base Challenger from the future, I believe. However, unlike Mega Man and Base 1, which eventually saw release in the US through the Game Boy Advance version, that was never released, mostly because the console was also Japan, Japan exclusive, being the Wonder Swan. And I'll probably do that at some point if I ever feel like being in pain. Oh, and random time to have the guy from Tango Man stage an aid. By the way, time for Burner Man. And as you can see, I'm very heavily considering dying because I need as much health as I can. And oh, hey, look, my health mysteriously refilled. I wonder what did that. Burner Man's actually a very interesting boss in that he's very fast paced. His weakness is Ice Wall, but not the Ice Wall itself. As his bio suggested, it's self-destruction, pushing him with the ice wall into the spikes on the side. I like that detail. But his fight's annoying because he's very projectile-based, and you can get a lot of damage in fast with those charges due to physical contact. And he has this one, like, charge attack from the sky where he dive bombs you, and it just does a lot of damage. I'm not a fan of, uh, of Burner Man because he's just a really annoying fight. But I like the concept of his weakness all the same. But his stage is way too long for its own good in my eyes as well. And for beating him, we get the weapon that is bio mentioned. Wave Burner. As its name suggests, you shoot fire out in a wavy pattern. We. It's very close range, but it can light up certain bombs to open up some paths for you. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part two, we're continuing on with more Robot Master fights. See you guys then.